What's up everyone? Rally Jack Design here. Long time no see. Now let me see if I can get this camera focused on me. There we go. I had someone who said they wanted me to do a breakdown of this and I said, all right, cool. Oh, it's been a while since I've done one of these videos and maybe this will get me to do more of them. Um, but I want to hop right in and just show you how I made this, you know, sort of fire design. Uh, pretty simple. There's a lot of stuff to it, but let's just get right to it. Let's turn everything off like usual. It's been a while since I did one of these. We'll see if I can remember what to do. All right, so everything starts with the player. So this, of course, already has some editing done to it. I'm not going to go too in depth into that. It's pretty much what I do for everything. It's one of my filters or one of my actions. And then add another layer on top just to make the colors the same as the original photo. Low curves layer to brighten up the darks, some selective color to boost some of the colors, and then hue and saturation and a curves layer to brighten his eyes. So nothing too complicated with that. Um, let me see what we've got here. So it starts off, I have an ellipse here at the bottom that I just have this sort of texture on. This is the, and then uh, a little bit of coloring. Just based on this, I mean, this is mostly covered up, so I didn't feel like warping this or anything to make it look like he was actually there. Should probably put like shadows under here, but it's all covered up anyway by fire, so it doesn't matter. I have this random explosion photo from Unsplash in the background set to like 70% opacity. Um, and then I'm gonna turn some of these on now because I had these on the whole time I was designing this. So I've got a color lookup, levels layer, selective color, and hue and saturation layer. So let's see what these are. Oh, this is drop blues, which is fun. I like to do that on some designs. This works really well for fire stuff because it gets rid of the blues. I wonder if this would look better without that though. Who knows? A levels layer to then counteract this color lookup because when you turn this color lookup on, you can see you lose it. You lose a bit of the uh, contrast. So this is adding the contrast back. Selective color layer, and this is gonna boost all of the reds and the yellows. It's boosting both of those. And then a hue and saturation layer, which is doing what? What is this doing? Oh, it's removing even more of the blues. So it's removing all of the cyan from the photo. You can see it's really not doing that much here. So I had these on when I was making this graphic. Um, but basically what this is, it's just a lot of lighting. I'm using the, the reverse curves technique, which Pix Imperfect I know has a good video on, um, but I can show you what I did here. So I have some like little fire effects that are behind the player. So you can see there, if I turn it off, a couple lighting effects set to screen. So he's there. I'll turn these on now. Um, these are multiple versions of the same sort of fireball that are all set to screen and then some have blurs blurs galleries gaussian blurs and if we look at it it's actually a puppet warped photo of just like sort of this fire from unsplash i believe so I puppet warped it into a curve so then it's sort of curving around him so i've got two of those and I didn't pay attention to these with when I did the lighting, which I should have, but I did it sort of, I added these late after the fact. Uh, what do we got here? This is just some added sparks to his hand. Um, let's add some, let's add the rest of this lighting and then I can show you where and why I did the lighting. So we've got, let me zoom in here. A little fireball, another little fireball. These are just like stock images of fire and I just made it so it was a circle instead of, I took off all the tails essentially. Put a little bit going up his arm. Uh, this is down at the bottom. Some flames at the bottom, and so is this. You know, flame set to screen. Who's this guy? Some added sparks here, just to add a little bit of detail. Some sparks. Another fireball. Another fireball. Basically, it's a bunch of the same stock image, or close to the same, and I just overlapped them, moved them around, stuff like that. So now we have this. And this looks cool already, just sort of warping images around um, figuring out what we want to go where but now we're going to actually do the lighting part this is using the reverse curves technique so let me move this right there okay cool so what that starts with is an exposure layer 
which is going to drop the exposure of everything. We'll do, I did negative one. This is sort of, you got to test the waters to see what works. And I've got a color balance on top of that. And the color balance is affecting the shadows. I'm making actually the shadows a little bit blue and the highlights a little bit red and yellow. And that's just to um, sort of add a little bit of contrast. But what I'm doing here is I know I want all of the yellows and oranges to be the highlights. So then to contrast that, I want to add a little bit of blue so we have a little bit of color contrast. So you can see we have a bunch of different layers here. We've got a bunch of curves layers, some gradient maps, um, which I don't have my my button for in this section. Um, and then some stuff at the top. What if I can add that to this? Let me add um, media source. It's been a while since I've done this. Um, Curves. And then we need to add another media source of Gradient map. Gradient map. There we go. All right, now we're back to normal. These are all curves layers. So I started off with the darks. So I've got darks, dark details, really dark details, highlights, highlight details, copy of highlights. This is just sort of a little bit of rim lighting. So this is just like one or two pixels selected, contracted on the image with like three and a half pixels. And then I erased it on this side for the most part because I didn't want that to be shown. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to turn off these, this front fire so you can see what I'm doing. Okay. Let's dive in. So basically I just painted with my uh, Wacom tablet. I used that to paint in areas away from this source. So I figured down here on his foot, the whole right side here, this side of his arm, the whole back of his glove, and then this side of his face and a little bit of his cap. Cause if this is shining right up here, you're not going to see part of this cap. So add a little bit of darkness. This one is a little bit darker. So you can see we're darkening the lights. We're taking away some red, adding in some blue. And that's what these are all are. They're just getting progressively darker because I want to add in more darkness, add in more darkness. And essentially each time I'm adding these, I'm refining it a little bit more. I'm adding a little bit more detail, you know, like in here in this collar, in his shirt here, you can see I added darkness here. It's all about trying to figure out what is getting hit by light and what isn't getting hit by light. And then what is getting hit by light? So highlights. So the whole left side of his body pretty much. And then some details. So some more of the edges, more on his face. You can see up here where I added, it's probably not 100% accurate, but you can see it's shaded on his face. It has a little bit of realism because really his hat would be catching some of that shadow. So you can turn some of these on and off. You can see where I painted a lot of the edges for this one. And then these are just general highlights here. The gradient maps I added at like 10% opacity just to add a little bit of color again for that color contrast. And this gradient map you can see is adding just a teeny bit of color to it set to normal. And I highlighted and used this, this highlight detail um, selection. I just drug it up and added it to that. And then this gradient map is set to like 20% and I grabbed the highlight selection, just dragged it up here. So it's the same. So these just add a little bit more color to the design. Um, what is this? This is then adding just sort of a little bit of red. You can see it is hat. So if we go up here, you can see this is adding a little bit of red. It's using the details again. I'm just using the same selections I already have because I just want to add color back into it. And then this is darkening. So this is using the same as just this dark selection here. So these selections are, or maybe it's dark details. Yeah, so it's dark details. It's the same thing. So if we zoom out, turn this on, turn this off. It's just adding more contrast to it. Cause I think what works really well when people do lighting designs like this is it has a ton of contrast. Like this is fine, but this is better cause it's showing that this is brighter and it's hitting these spots. So this is gonna brighten up and add some red. So I just use the details again. And this, this is sort of a cheat code you can use. If you just wanna add a little bit more brightness, just keep the same selection and then just add it to a different layer. And then this adds a little bit more color to it. This is set to 30%. Again, it's that same selection. You just hold down the option or alt key, drag it up, same selection. And then this curves layer is darkening just so faintly. And I'm using the really dark details 
selection, you just drag it up, boom, dark details. Um, it's it's a, really all it is, is it's using several curves layers to darken or lighten something. And then it's just all about where you paint. And that's where having a tablet works in handy because you can control the, um, the flow based on pressure, pressure to size, and then you can change the flow so you can gradually build in those details. What a lot of younger designers do is they'll do all of this really haphazardly with either pure white or a really hard brush and you can't get it to flow like this. And some of these layers you can see, so like this dark layer actually has a blend if on it so it's not affecting the light areas and all of the highlights have the same blend if on it. So it's not hitting the blacks as drastically. So that's pretty much what it is to this graphic. We turn this front flame back on and then just some tweaks at the end. So we turn this on and off. You can see we do a lot here. So this has just a minor lens correction on it just because I thought it looks cool. I don't know what it's at. Plus 10, you know, nothing crazy. So basically just warps it a little bit. And then camera raw, let's take a look at that and hopefully it doesn't break the computer. Uh, let's resize this down. What do we got here? So just some slight edits, adding contrast, dumbing down the highlights, upping the shadows, adding to the whites, taking away from the blacks, a little bit of texture, a little bit of clarity. And I put dehaze to negative 25. I don't know why I did that, just for fun. It sort of brightened everything up. Added a little bit of vibrance. Color mixer, I played around with these. I really played around to see what the yellows, oranges, and reds do. Like these aren't gonna do anything. That's why they're at random amounts because there's no real magenta or purple or anything. And then to go along with that orange and blue, I went ahead and added a little yellow or orange to the highlights and midtones and purple or blues to the shadows, which is just gonna add a little bit of color grading to this. And then I added some grain and a little vignette. And then I tweaked the calibration of these colors just a little bit. So you can see if I change the blue primary, you know, I can make this yellow, which looks kind of nice. If I put it over here, it looks bad. So I just boosted it up a little bit to make the flames a little bit more yellow and then change the hue. I'll just go ahead and hit okay. Make whatever tweaks those are. Then I have a lovely lens dirt set to 40% that I turned orange. And then just a couple little eye stock photos of like flames and little specks of barks at the bottom. And then one final color lookup, Ethan J's. Uh, Ethan J designs make it pop nine. And actually set that to 100%, which I usually don't do, but it worked really well for this to brighten things up, so. That's pretty much it. You know, it's just a lot of the same methods you would see in someone who does the reverse curves technique. Um, it's just all about patience and detail. I don't think I really spent that much time on this. I could have spent a lot more time. I don't know. Maybe I spent like an hour, you know, doing all the lighting. Um, but someone like Jonathan Oxdo would probably spend like three or four hours doing this and making it look ridiculous. So I hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown. I'll try and make more videos. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna go live anytime soon. That's still up in the air, but I was happy to put this video back up for you guys. I hope you guys have a lovely, great rest of your day.